February 26th, the sun is shining in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and you're here for the Public Works Committee. Kiki Miller and Dan English. We're all here and we want to welcome Renata. You're appointment number one. Talk Thanks. to us. Thank you. One of my important duties as city clerk is the records custodian. So the city of Coeur d'Alene has adopted this records retention manual as required by the state of Idaho. Within this manual, we've set up a schedule for documents to be destroyed. So they're rated as temporary, semi-permanent, or permanent records. So what I have before you today are three departments that are requesting temporary and semi-permanent records to be destroyed. So they have passed their records retention requirement period of two to five years and are no longer needed and or have been scanned into the computer. So they are requesting destruction to make room for more paper. Questions? Keek? Dan? Yeah. <clears throat> this is a necessary part of housekeeping. getting uh, enough space. Yep. Can you do this periodically? Yes. Uh, yes. Whenever we have enough that it makes sense to bring forward for you guys. Um, but generally, if there's a department that has a stack of stuff they need to be destroyed, I'll bring it forward. Okay. And, <clears throat> go ahead. So that's your whole list here is every department kind of put in their sections and then you take care of it removing yes. it all at one time yes and currently it's finance fire and municipal services all right I look for a motion well, I would make a motion to recommend council authorize staff to proceed with the destruction of records as listed pursuant to Idaho code 5908 second been moved and second any other questions thoughts all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed we put down the consent, please. Thank you. Thanks, <coughs> Renata. Welcome. Next, Bill Greenwood from the Parks Place. Thanks Good for coming out, everybody. Bill. How are you? Good. So we're here to talk about our iconic structure, the grandstands. So a while back, we went out for RFQs, uh, and we had two firms that submitted their qualifications to do this. Um, and Architects West was the firm that was chosen. So we're looking for your permission to move forward with this. I might back up a little bit in that uh, when this first came forward, Ignite um, pledged to give us a million dollars to refurbish those grandstands. And Mr. Burns asked me if we would take the lead on that. And we've done that for him. And the um, firm will walk this all the way through construction. So there will be some more opportunity for Council, Ignite, and the Park and Rec Commission to see this as it, as it unfolds. I'm ignorant to as what the contractor and the architect are going to do to make this stay historical. I don't know how they're going to do that. And so I'm leaving it to the experts to kind of guide us through this process, but there'll be plenty of vetting with all the interested parties about how we're going to do that and what elements are going to be within the concession stand, underneath the concession stand, a restroom facility, maybe lockers, maybe storage, but we don't know how that all is going to play out yet. So um, as it moves forward, you'll certainly get to see some of this stuff again. Mr. McEvers, you asked me for a photo, and I couldn't find anything of a rendering other than just pictures of what we have existing because we really haven't gotten down into that kind of detail yet. Any questions? I just had a comment, um, Bill. I, this is a real um, sensitive and um, yes. well-loved, iconic structure. Um, structure. Yes, it is. And I know you're sensitive to that, too. Yep. So I just want to make sure that we're, um, as we're engaging Architects West to move forward with this, that there's plenty of time for the public to know what's happening Correct. and that we get... Um, a lot of input on right. keeping that. Like you said, if we haven't seen anything, we don't know what they're planning, right. but it's just real important that um, we protect that sensitive, um, iconic structure for the public. Understood. Benefit. And I, I've got a, a level of comfort. Um, John Mueller is their um, landscape architect. And now he's kind of a local historian, and so he's really got a heart for that sort of thing. So you, you may have seen his book, mm -hmm. and but I really feel good about his uh, create creative abilities and their engineers done a lot of work on refurbishing some stuff out of town and he worked on some on the Elks building so he's got that sensitivity that we're concerned about okay good well just do you know I know that the <clears throat> what I've seen so far is they're talking about I'm guessing that when it's done 
they'll look at the exterior and be able to tell some difference, and of course the structural Integrity. safety and all of that. Yeah. But as far as like the interior, so to speak, of the grandstand, is that going to look different or replace benches, or is it that kind of a thing? Well, one thing we're really going to have to focus on is ADA accessibility. So that's for certain will change. So there's going to be those ramps are going to change in their in their pitch and their grade, and they uh, will probably have to lose a section of grandstand benching where we maybe cut out an area where a wheelchair could get into. But as far as removing all of the wood, that I'm not so certain about. Okay. Two questions. So um, Miller Stoffer was involved in in this, and how did the was it a competition? Was it a bid for money? How did you guys decide? It's an RFQ, which is a for qualifications, a request for qualifications. And um, the panel uh, voted on this. There was a rating criteria. And the one element where uh, Architects West kind of stepped ahead was in that they have done grandstand work. They illustrated that within their RFQ. Uh, Miller Stoffer didn't demonstrate that. And that was one where they kind of got a few points ahead. And the other was, as I spoke earlier about John, Mr. Mueller's um, historical feel. I mean, so that, that they got a, a, for me, they got a point more than the other firm did for that very reason. Okay. The other question I had was on timing. Is this a project that's, it's a near future thing? Yes. Like before baseball season or? Well, here's what's happening. Um, the field itself was seeded last year, and we're trying to get that really healthy. Um, it's not quite there yet, so we're not going to play on it this spring or fall. So it's a great opportunity to go ahead and let the turf grass get real healthy and while they're doing construction. Our hope is uh, that we will be well completed before next spring season. And so they'll, they can get some exterior work done, and if they've got to wait to do some interior work when the weather's bad, they can do that, and they can continue to work through December if necessary. Okay. Anything else, you guys? Look for a motion. I would make a motion to approve the agreement with Architects West for professional services for the Memorial Field Softball Grandstand Rehabilitation and Improvements. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any other questions, thoughts? All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks. Consent, please. This is the one I've been looking forward to. Best Hills Tank. Terry Pickle, come on down. Good afternoon. <clears throat> I'm here to talk about uh, our progress on uh, phase number two of our Northeast uh, Pressure Enhancement Project, and specifically the uh, Best Hill Bush Station bids. As you know, we've been uh, working on this project for the last uh, year and a half. And uh, phase one of the, prog of the uh, project, we originally thought we were going to need a new tank up in the northeast quadrant. Uh, first phase of it was to build a new water model, uh, an interactive model that kind of shows things a little bit more in real time. Uh, and in doing so, we found out that we really did not need the tank. Oops, should have. So we opted to look at some different uh, problems to, uh, or different uh, solutions to uh, solve the pressure fluctuation problems and discovered that uh, we've been having problems with the best steel tank for, since 1971 when it was installed and uh, we couldn't ever get it to function hydraulically with the rest of the system. And also we had some pressure reducing valves that were installed in 2007 that weren't exactly functioning as designed. Uh, so we opted to eliminate the tank for now. It'll be needed in the future as uh, the high zone expands, but for now we can get by with what we have for existing storage. Uh, we also discovered that we had, we had plans, excuse me, let me go back a little bit, we had planned to do a, a small expansion of the high zone, and we discovered with the existing storage we could accommodate that expansion and uh, uh, change out some of the valving, so we have done that. And then we also could put, build this boost station on the tank and actually draw the water from the tank, pump it into the system, force the tank to work the way it was initially intended. So with that, we have uh, completed the high zone expansion. Uh, this was, let me see if that, it won't show up. The blue line was the existing uh, high zone boundary, uh, kind of along NIDER and uh, Lunsford and around that area up through uh, um, Nettleton Gulch, 
the white line is where we have expanded it to. We took in approximately 1,400 new services into that area, which improved fire flow, uh, water capacity. Uh, this will now allow the new ICCU bank, uh, thereby uh, uh, Winco, to be constructed without an additional booster and an additional meter. They were looking at two meters to feed that system. Now it can be done under one meter with no booster. Uh, so we effectively raised the pressure there about 34 PSI. Uh, so they were very pleased about this. This allowed some uh, residential area development on uh, Fruitland uh, off, uh, across from Cherry Lane. Um, that couldn't be done due to fire flow prior to that. Uh, in the process, uh, we took out uh, two existing uh, pressure reducing valves and we changed uh, one pressure reducing valve to a pressure sustaining valve so it'll actually hold the pressure in the system rather than relieving it. And then we activated a new one on, Luke, on Lee Court that had been put in 2007 but had never been used because it was prior to the expansion area. Um, out of those 1,400 services, we had about four complaints. So everything went really, really well. We were surprised. We figured a lot more than that. But it's Picture, where is the Best Hills tank? Uh, I'll get to that in just a minute. Oh, okay, sorry. So the next thing we need, like we talked about, we needed to do the uh, uh, valve modifications. That's in progress. We were very lucky this year, and we hired an employee that has 10 years' experience working on these valves. So we're able to do it in-house rather than having to hire it out. Uh, he's been very good at getting everything set up, changing over the controls, and he's very knowledgeable on it. So that's been a, a real boon to us as well. So now we're looking at constructing the new booster station. This is just a kind of an example of the size of the station and uh, kind of what it'll look like. This is the best hill tank. It's uh, east of Fire Station 3 uh, on the backside of Cherry Hill Park. You can see the Fallen Heroes Monument there kind of to the west of it. Uh, it's hidden very well in the trees and it is painted forest green so it disappears and blends into the uh, countryside there. So most people don't even know it's there. Uh, as I've stated, since 1971 when it was constructed, it has never functioned hydraulically in the system very well because it is too close to the wells and too far away from Tubbs Hill Reservoirs. We've done some piping projects in the past to try to help it and it has been very modest in any assistance it's made. This booster station will now be able to pull about 2,000 GPM out of that tank uh, during our peak need, which is usually irrigation season and pump it back in and force it into the system to uh, help that tank feed the system as it should. Most of the time it sits there stagnant because it just cannot fluctuate like it should, as a reservoir should. You should have the levels go up and down as the water goes in and out of the system to help regulate pressure and flow as it's needed. So, uh, This is kind of a diagram of existing tank. The new booster station will sit uh, to the southeast of it, right inside the fenced area. Um, JUB has been working on this project. This is a, a diagram of what the uh, inside of the pump station will look like and what the piping looks like. Um, as you may recall, we went to bid on this last summer. Um, our bids came in extremely high, well over budget. Uh, we sat and tried to figure out what we were going to do to make it work. Uh, we decided to do our own piping work. So I had our crew take this thing offline in October and they've been working uh, in November and December to get this new pipeline in. Uh, part of the problem with the original bid was the timing of the tank. It can only be offline from October through about May. And the construction companies were very concerned that they couldn't get the piping done and build the building to get the tank back online in time. So we took this on. Uh, our crews did a very good job, as you can see from the picture there. Um, they got it laid out. Even the contractors are very impressed with them. Uh, so this has all been rebuilt. Uh, that's the actual approximately floor elevation of that new booster station. You can see where the, the grade originally was there on the, on the bank above it. Uh, so the booster station will actually sit down below grade just a little bit. Um, and it'll be on the downhill side, it'll be open to a walkway with stairs around it. So, uh, so the bid came in. Uh, we went out to bid. Uh, opened them on uh, the 14th of February, and TML Construction Incorporated uh, was the lowest responsive bidder at 431 and 455. Uh, the engineer's estimate was approximately 548,000, so they came in well under the engineer's estimate. Uh, we've talked to them, and everything seems to be good. Uh, the engineer reviewed the 
the proposal and uh, we think we're on track to get it done. Uh, the nice thing about it now is with the piping done, we can put the tank back online while they're constructing the building because we'll be have valving that we'll be able to do that and get everything operational again. So it'll be online before May. The bush station probably won't be completed till June or July. Um, but it won't matter because the tank will still be able to operate as it did in the past. It will not have the pumps uh, set up till about July, but it should still function. So we won't be short water that way. So, uh, so here was the original bid uh, last summer, 794237 uh, The current bid is 431455 as I mentioned. Uh, the parts we utilize, parts materials and uh, backfill material is $82,299. So in my view of that, our folks brought a value of $280,483 to that project to lower the price for $82,000 worth of materials. I'm very proud of them for doing that. And it was a fun project for them. So what I have before the committee is the request to uh, award the lowest responsive bid and the contract to TML Construction for $431,455. Just awesome, Terry. You know what? This is the kind of stuff that makes it fun to be on Public Works. <laughs> when our guys are putting pipes and running water. I do have one question. Yes. So this pump house, is it, have to, which direction is the water going through this pump? Out or in? Out. Out, okay. So the in is okay. Yep. This is gonna make it go out yep. faster. Exactly. All right, any questions? <laughs> in these Audis, come I on. know, I got that. Just... So that 200 and some thousand in saving, does that show up like in their Christmas bonuses? Or the... <laughs> if no, only. we can't single out one you department. You have to talk to the guy over here in the white shirt and the tie. <laughs> probably go to the landings, right? Yeah. <laughs> you got anything for him? No, I don't. Great, thanks. It was a nice presentation, though. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very great. much. Thank you. It was Appreciate concise. It. We all learned something from it. Good. All right, look for a motion. I would make a motion to recommend council acceptance of the lowest responsive bid and award the construction contract to TML Construction for the Best Hill Booster Station in the amount of $431,455. Second. Moved and seconded. Just fabulous. That feel good? Mm -hmm. So all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Consent calendar, please. Thanks, Terry. Thank Appreciate you. it. I like when we can spend four hundred thirty thousand dollars just like I know. that. <laughs> and now, from the other side of the water, where does the water go? That's the Audi. All the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Audi. Uh, from uh, Mike from the wastewater treatment plant. Welcome, Mike. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're uh, saving some money too, aren't you? Uh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Always. Um. So, uh, from the other side of the water, as, as you mentioned. Sorry. Um, I bring to you uh, tonight a request for an amendment to uh, an HDR contract um, at the wastewater treatment facility. As you're aware, <clears throat> we have been working on a tertiary stage of treatment uh, and in the process of construction and a lot of what's already constructed, we are currently adding on to and expanding the capacity of it. And during that process, we discovered a need. Uh, and that need is for what we're calling a bridge crane. Um, and uh, well, the reason for the bridge crane was removal of these cassettes. These are the, uh, the membranes themselves. They are in this uh, large cassette. There's a total of 30 of those. And when you when we, the way we were installing them previously, Excuse me, I'm sorry. Yeah, I have the wrong presentation here. Okay. Uh, well. <laughs> so the way we were uh, installing them previously was with a, um, uh, a, a boom truck or a crane. And what had occurred during that, uh, that time was, here we go, sorry guys. Um, so what occurs during when we're using a uh, um, that crane, as you can see, it dangles from quite a height. Uh, this is with a boom truck, uh, and the first what we're calling them trains that were online were the outer ones. 
We were able to get to those with this boom truck. With the new expansion, we're going to be going to these, what we're calling inner trains, which you can see in this picture. Um, and as you get farther in, as you can imagine, the crane's got to get taller to reach out there. And what was happening was a lot of sway. So what we are proposing is we'd like to install the, one of these bridge-mounted gantry cranes that would be similar to this in style. Um, it would ride along on rails and be able to pluck from a much closer distance these, uh, these cassettes. Uh, and what that would allow us to do is, let me go back to this one, is when those guys, you can see the way they're hanging over that open section, it would allow it a lot less movement. There is about maybe a quarter inch or so of play when these things actually slide into place. So it's pretty tight getting in. And the less slack we have on that line, the better. So we are uh, asking for an amendment to our existing uh, um, engineer who's working on this construction project already to engineer for us a, uh, uh, what we would need to facilitate this bridge crane. Questions, Dan? Yeah, so with that <coughs> crane, will that stay in place or? Uh, yes, yeah, so what we decided to go with is, you can go back to that picture, <coughs> Um, it's mobile, but it would only so much. It would move laterally along and be able to pick one of them up and remove it or clean it or whatever, facilitate whatever it needed, and move laterally along the, uh, the trains, as we call them. And then when it was not in service, it would be, let's see if I picture the building here, we would end up, so in this, in this picture, it would, it would go, uh, no, what would that be? That would be east to west. So it would roll along those trains, and when not in service, it would butt up next to the building there. So it wouldn't be this large. Well, I was thinking it looked like it'd be handy if they had to pull an engine out of a dump truck or something. <laughs> they could, we it, could get some multi-purpose, but OK. It would need to be supported on okay. something. I mean, that's what the engineering's for. But I anticipate it being supported on some sort of a metal track on the outside Very or something picker. like that. So it would have a limited range of, okay. of movement. You're not going to see it going down uh, Ramsey. <laughs> Kiki. So I'm reading this, and the, there's a $33,000, and this is for the design and meetings, and pr is it inclusive of the construction of this? No. This is just for the design of the crane. So what's the, how, okay, this seems like a really big miss in a project like this, that there wasn't a tool created to put this, these tertiary membranes in there. And so now we're 33000 into design a tool to do that, and then you're going to come back to us, I'm guessing, with a pretty big price tag to build this thing. We were going to come back to you exactly with when we, when we, after we have a design, then we can put that out for a proposal and see what kind of bids we're getting on it. And, and uh, we'll come back to you with a price for that. So just um, what's the downside risk of not approving this? Uh, as I mentioned, it's a, the reason we're looking for it is a safety factor. We're looking, we're finding that we're going to be removing these cassettes somewhat regularly and for the guy's safety we wanted to get in one of these bridge cranes to allow them to do what they need to do in the most safe manner possible. So then what's the life expectancy of a bridge crane in this particular? You, do I, you I don't have, have an answer for you on that. Okay. So uh, we I, might by the time we look at. We would, right. When it's going to gonna be done. So, okay. It's not abnormal I might add. I mean you can see in the uh, previous picture there is a crane that that bridge crane stays outside doesn't go anywhere so there are outdoor rated cranes and everything else like that so again just to <clears throat> remind myself too this is not just for I mean the initial construction they stick them down in there and then they're done but you say they have to regularly bring them up to service clean or whatever for maintenance exactly in okay. the picture um, you could kind of see what they are like a uh, small strands right and and there's hundreds of you know thousands of them in, in one cassette so right those right. will occasionally need maintenance of some kind or another so as we maintain it we'll need to pick them what do you think guys i think it's a pretty big miss but i don't know that we can do anything about that um uh, makes so. it safer more efficient mm -hmm. i would think how many 
cassettes are in there? Uh, we currently had six, but we're upgrading to, th to oh, I'm sorry, we currently had six, actually, and um, we're upgrading to 30 of them. 30. 30. And eventually, our long-term plan is for 36 of them. So this wasn't taken into consideration in the beginning when they designed it? I'm not really sure. This was honestly before my time. Sorry. I wish I could tell you what had occurred. I just, as we're going forth, we just see the need for it at this point. I don't really have an answer for you as to why it wasn't considered or if it wasn't. Troy? <laughs> He's itching to say here. something. <laughs> Good afternoon. And the sun members. comes out. Who is it? Looking into the sun makes it more difficult. Uh, this question was asked by administration as well, and so I'm going to go back a little bit. This tertiary treatment has become the key to the process, and in so doing, it is very efficient on the use of space. Well, you just heard how tight these cassettes are in there. And then when we were looking at this master plan, it was conceived that we wouldn't have to take it out quite as often as we end up finding that we do, and that is both good and bad. And then secondarily, getting access to a crane doesn't work quite as easily as we'd hoped when construction is really busy. And you've heard about the sway. So I asked all of these good questions of staff, said, why didn't we think about this? We did think about it. But in the effort to keep costs down and do the most efficient way of planning, this is probably going to be north of 400 large at the end of the day. But we will not get out of this business, so it's a long-term asset that's going to lower our liability, allow us to be more efficient in the maintenance and operation of the tertiary treatment, and keep us in a safe situation. So it's a good time to borrow money. We're borrowing money way less than what we'd anticipated. The miss was the hope that we could get by with a lot less pulling them out of their container. So I just wanted to come in and say we did, but we were hoping that the crane very infrequently being used was the answer, and we're not finding that at this point. I think also when we started that, it, it was a, it was a try. It was. We built it and said, is this going to get us to where we need to get in cleaning the water, right? Yeah. And so now that's happened, and now we're going for it. Yeah, we're going large with it. It definitely takes a much smaller footprint than any of the other processes that we had when we right. did those um, trial runs of the three different systems. And so this is just one of those features that we had looked at, said a lot about it, and said, you know, it's probably $500,000. Is there a better way to rent a piece of equipment, bring them in? And the team now is saying having it on site is easier, it is much safer, and this is the right time to design it and implement. Thank you. And anything else, Mike? You're good? Uh, I think so. Yes, I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> it's a right. follow up. Uh, just to remind me the um, wastewater, is that also like an enterprise fund that is by fees versus the general taxation? Or? It's all fees for the service rendered. There's no property taxes that go into that. Correct. So basically, this is necessary overhead and it gets paid for out of the uh, fees? by the users, yep. yep. Okay. All right, look for a motion then. Okay. I'll make a motion that we approve amendment number two to the professional services agreement between the City of Coeur d'Alene and HDR Engineering, Inc. for additional professional design services for the tertiary treatment phase two improvements. And do you need an amount read into that? If so, it would be $33,701. Second. Sin moved and seconded, and we're clear on that. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Consent, please. Thanks so much for the presentation, you guys. It helps when we can see stuff. Of course. Thank you. With that, we'll look for an adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. aye. Thanks, you all, for coming. I almost said amen.